Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here, and today I'm going to be painting this impressionistic, misty evening um, landscape, looking out across the fields to the trees in the distance. I'm going to be trying out um, Cotman Turquoise for the first time, and using it with a few other colours uh, from my normal repertoire and seeing how turquoise goes with it, seeing if it's something that I'll um, want to use again in the future. So I'm using Arsh watercolour paper. Um, it's 100% cotton, it's cold pressed, and it's taped to my board with ordinary decorator's masking tape. My board's at an angle of about 45 degrees, so gravity will help me to paint. And I'm going to use the wet in wet method. So using a large wash brush, any wash brush will do. Um, I'm wetting my page all over. Um, the angle of 45 degrees will help the paint to flow. Now this is burnt sienna and with my um, one and a half inch Princeton Aqua Elite Mottler, I'm creating just a nice soft sky. I'm starting off with this burnt sienna sky, a graduated wash that starts off a little darker and becomes lighter as I come down and then darker again as I come across where my tree line will be and the fields. I'll then begin to introduce this rich, deep turquoise. So to start with, I'm going to keep this turquoise around the base um, of the land area, just coming up over the tape um, and sort of just putting in these brush strokes that are sort of um, shallow diagonals and um, horizontal brush strokes. Um, then introducing some more of that really rich burnt sienna so that it can sort of blend and marry and mingle with the turquoise and just give me all kinds of different hues. And then taking the tips of my brush and dropping in a distant tree line. And then I'm going to change to an Escoda Ultimo synthetic mop brush. It's clean and it's just damp so I'm carefully softening back and creating a soft edge so that my distant tree line disappears into the mist. And now just a dryish mixture of um, burnt sienna and I can drop into that um, almost dry sky wash um, some the beginnings of some distant trees that are slightly higher than the tree line that I've washed in earlier. And then with the tips of the brush and a dark mixture made from sepia, turquoise, burnt sienna mixed together, um, I'm dropping in some darks using the tips of the brush and angling them so I can begin to build up that tangle of undergrowth. I sprayed the mixture with my water misting spray and now I've turned my board 90 degrees and you can see the paint running, marrying and mingling and running down the page and that's creating some lovely soft transitions but I'm still keeping some of the marks that I made and I can add a few more marks um, coming out of the top of those softer areas, these will all soften and diffuse, um, but this is beginning to build up my tonal values and my textures. Then with the synthetic brush, pulling across some shadow, paler shadow and tone across the field on the left side, leaving a nice amount of light on the right side. I'm going to be using salt a little bit later to create beautiful little flower patterns and sort of the undergrowth, the brambles and the weeds across the foreground. So I'm trying to get as much texture into the foreground as I can. It will soften back because of course this is the wet in wet technique and so as I apply this dark rich paint then it will soften and diffuse but I will be left with some of these marks and textures as well as these lovely colour blends that are happening on the page as the different colours uh, blend into each other and create their magic on the page. Now, I'm not very happy with my sky. Um, because the paper dried more quickly than I was expecting, I wasn't able to put any of the turquoise into the sky. Uh, but um, 
what I'm going to do is wait for the sky to completely dry and then I'll glaze over it with some turquoise just to bring it down to that sort of twilight look that I'm looking for. I've laid my board flat now because um, the washes have moved around as much as I want them to. If I lay it flat, gravity won't influence the paint anymore. Things will just soften and diffuse. And now I can just etch into the damp paint with the corner of a chopped up piece of plastic store card. And it's giving me even more texture and the illusion or the impression of tangled weeds, brambles, grasses, all that sort of stuff. Um, sort of on this field boundary in the foreground. I can then go and add a little bit of um, the impressions of trunks in those distant trees. And also, because I'm going to be glazing over the sky once it's dry, I'm going to use um, my synthetic mop brush to dry brush on some canopies over those trunks and branches. It's going to look a bit dark and a bit odd to start with but as soon as I've um, glazed over the sky then I'm hoping the glaze will bring the whole painting together. But for now I'm going to um, take my fine table salt and sprinkle that across the foreground that I've prepared with all this texture and rich paint and beautiful etched marks um, and hopefully I'll end up with some really pretty marks that will be suggestive of flowers, seed heads, frost, anything you like really, something and nothing. And now I'm just going to wait for my sky to become bone dry. Um, my salt area will stay wet for a bit longer because um, salt prolongs the drying time but uh, my sky is now touch dry, well bone dry, and I'm going to mix up a glaze of turquoise. Um, a glaze is something that really brings out the beauty of um, transparent watercolour. So I'm lightly wetting over the sky, just the sky. I want everything else kept as it is. So by re-wetting the sky, I can um, paint this lovely glaze, which is the turquoise mixed with plenty of water, but I can paint that across my sky quickly and carefully. And you can still see the orange of the burnt sienna showing through the transparent wash of turquoise. And hopefully once I've um, put a slightly richer mixture of the turquoise across the top and it's all softened and diffused, I should hopefully end up with a really soft, beautiful twilight sky, um, still with that orange glow um, peeping through the transparent turquoise. Beauty of transparent watercolour when you can see different colours through the layers of different glazes. This is a clean, damp brush, just lifting a bit of that turquoise out across the distant field below the tree line, just to bring some light back to the field. Just lifting a, a little bit from the tree line as well. As I lift with a clean, damp brush, that's kind of taking off some of that glaze and leaving a much drier uh, page there. So I've laid my board flat again now that my glaze has been applied and I'm very carefully quickly going in and dry brushing on a bit of turquoise over my canopies um, for my distant tree line. They should just soften back a bit as that glaze dries. And then hopefully I will end up with a much more harmonious sky. Just before it dries though, again, I'm going to exploit that turquoise glaze and using the corner, sharp corner of a chopped up piece of plastic store card, I'm going to etch in some trunks and branches. And then what will happen, because I'm scratching the paper with the corner of the card, um, the turquoise glaze will flood into the scratches and create a slightly darker fine line without me having to paint anything and that should just give me my distant tree winter trees 
And now I need to leave it alone, step back, have faith that it'll dry okay and wait till it is completely dry. So here it is and I'm really pleased with the way it's looking. It's a little bit brighter than this but the um, uh, there's, there's not much light coming in through my studio windows at the moment but I'll show you um, a better representation of it at the end. So what I've got to do now is paint in just a few foreground trees and I'm afraid the way my camera is set up and the angle of it when I paint um, at this edge of the paper all you can see mostly is my hand and I'm really sorry about that but as I move my hand away uh, when I finish each brush stroke you'll begin to see that I'm pulling um, tree trunks and branches up from the texture that I created with the salt and all those um, heavy washes of paint across the foreground. And these trees should link the foreground to the field in the midground and then the distant trees in the background and the sky. Um, this painting is, is more or less from my imagination. I was trying to find a photograph on Pixabay to paint, so I was looking at misty photographs and there was nothing that was really um, drawing my eye, but... What happened was, seeing so many misty photographs, um, it gave me the ideas to sort of put a few ideas together like this to create this painting. And I think it's, it's looking okay. And I think that uh, sometimes if you're not sure what to paint, that could be a really good way of, of sort of combining a combination of research and using your imagination. So go online and research and look at some photographs of the subject that you want to paint um, and then walk away from those and just have a mind full of images and then see if you can uh, pull some ideas together um, using your imagination and the memories of those images and see what happens. It could be a really interesting way of painting. And it can also be useful if, like me, you're trying out new colours or a new colour and you're not sure how that colour reacts with your um, usual colours. So I like the trees there um, coming out sort of just a little bit into the painting and filling up that left foreground edge a little bit and holding the eye into the painting and now I'm taking a slightly darker richer mixture and I'm picking out some of the darker areas on the trunk and some of the branches to put in the real strong shadows and to negatively paint um, some branches and sticks and twigs and shrubs and things just crisscrossing here and there over the trunk in places. I'm taking my time now because this is, of course, um, a, a dry painting and I'm going in with this sort of fairly rich wet paint and a small brush and these nice dark hues and I'm trying to sort of um, blend in the tree with the tangle of foreground um, overgrown brambles and weeds etc. Smoothing out with my finger if I need to, just sort of softening back and blending here and there. And then maybe a few more branches. Again, softening those back if they're looking a bit too dark. Be very easy to overdo this, but I think because my foreground's turned out so prettily, I'm being really careful not to um, overdo these details. So standing back and looking at it, I think it's just about done. Um, I'm going to take a clean, dry brush and carefully brush any remaining salt crystals from the foreground. Um, nearly all of them have dissolved and in, in the creation of these pretty patterns. And now for my favourite moment, and that's um, removing the tape and having a look at the painting with a clean white border, which really gives it a much more sort of finished look. And here it is. And I must admit, I'm pleasantly surprised at how 
subtle this turquoise has ended up being. Um, it's really blended well with my existing colour palette. And this turquoise actually reminds me quite a lot of Prussian blue, but it does have a unique quality to it, as Cotman uh, turquoise is made from thalo blue and thalo green. And of course, the thalos are staining colours, so where the salt has kind of pushed away the paint, instead of being left with the white of the paper, I'm left with the stained paper. And that in itself has given me these beautiful shadowy blooms. Uh, so I really do have the impression that the front of the painting is in the shadow and as we move towards the mid ground then the light is just catching those flowers a little bit more. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this come together and that maybe it'll inspire you to have a go at trying out some Cotman turquoise for yourself if you haven't already got some. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, um, please do. It really helps with our reach. And thank you so much for your support, whether it's here on YouTube or on Patreon. Your support means the world to us. Have a great week and I'll see you soon and happy painting. Bye.